Hello, I'm Atuba just now. Today is Friday. Praise God. And, and, and we're in the month of October. The blessing of God has started pouring out already. Receive yours now. In Jesus' name. Amen. How does God bless? He sends his word first. So receive his word. Hide it in your heart. And then the physical things will begin to come to you. Father, will bless you. Thank you for today we receive our daily bread. The blessing of the Lord makes rich and it adds no sorrow with it. So we receive it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we're still talking about life lessons from the Bible. Praise God. So we, we just talked about the story of Job. How God, now the whole essence of the story of Job is to show you one thing. God has another blessing to give you than the one you have right now. And the way to that blessing, that, that, that is true riches. Listen, grow to that place of true riches. Stop depending on your job, stop depending on your salary, on the business you do, on the connections you have to be blessed. As good as that is, it doesn't mean that is wrong. As good as that is, grow to that place of true riches. And how do you grow to that place of true riches? You've got to come to the place of debt. See? Now, what, 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 do, I, what do I mean debt? It's not something you do willingly. I'm not telling you now, go pack everything you have and sell it and give to the poor. It's not any man that determines that. It is you your work with the Lord. It's not one day God will say, all of us, I give out everything you have. No, it's the Lord speaking to you because he knows who and who is perfect before him. So it's the Lord that will come to you and tell you, son, give out that car. You know, it, it may not even happen one day like, but you just realize at a certain season of your life, ah, everything I ever worked for, for some reason, I seem to be giving it out by the word of the Lord. Why? I'll tell you why. True riches. True riches. Now let me tell you this truth. As a child of God, you don't have to wait to get mammon first. And then I say, God, I have mammon now. Can you test me for true riches? <laughs> no. You can start out from where you are and begin to believe God for true riches. Oh, I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. You don't have to wait to be a billionaire and like Job and then God, okay, God, I get, you know, God, now you can test me. Oh. No. Lord, I believe in true riches. I see it. And I trust you. All it takes is to trust in the Lord completely. I mean, <laughs> see, he that cometh to God must believe that he is. If God is and you believe he is, you will trust him for true riches. So you may have a very good job right now. And you just settle it in your heart. You know what? The day God tells me to resign from this job, I'm not going to think twice concerning it. Why? You see, because what's going to make you think twice? It's not because of the service you're rendering. No, it's not. Most times it's going to be because of the comfort you enjoy that that job gives you monetary kind of comfort. Okay, I pay the bills with this job. So if I resign now, who's going to pay the bills? Those are the kind of things that will go through your mind. It's not, mm, ah, the, 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 the purpose I'm serving in this place, ah, if I leave, who's going to do it? You know that's not true. Because <laughs> it's going to be filled. Oh, but I'm serving God in this place. I'm preaching to people at least. I make them do the right things in this place. Oh yeah, where he's sending you to? Whatever next he wants you to do, you will do it a lot better. You know that's true. But you see, will you be able to believe God in your heart when you begin to think about what he has said? I want you to resign from that job. So how am I going to survive? God will take care of me. Oh, I know he will take care of me. I've seen him take care of me before. So now he, he wants me to rely on him. Okay, I'm going to do that. But, but your, your, your rent is going to be due in two months. So what's going to happen? It's the same thing I'm saying. He will take care of you. But, but, but you used to 
take care of this person and take care of this. You know, God's going to take care of everybody. And you speak. You see, don't just think it in your heart. You voice it out to the Lord. Now, that's where it is. By your mouth, with your mouth, confession is made unto salvation when you believe with your heart. So you believe God's going to take care of you. So you hear that thought in your heart saying, so how are you going to survive? Lord, I know one thing. Taking care of me has never been your problem. And this thing you're telling me to do, you want to take care of me, I trust you to take care of me. So that's the list of my words. So what are you going to be doing every day? And now we're talking, okay, Lord, you know what, can you just, I don't want to be sit down. I don't want to just sit down and, and do nothing. Can you just show me what you have me do? Next, I'm so glad to leave here and go do it. And I'm not talking about walking to get paid. If you want me to just be walking around, strengthening people and encouraging people, if you want me to, just, just let me know, Lord. I just don't want to feel this. Now you can talk to God like that. But if it comes to the cares, remember, Jesus said that's what's going to come to choke the word and make the word unfruitful. But let me tell you the truth. God will not tell you to resign. You know, your mindset. You know, this is, this is where a lot of people make that mistake. You see someone, 10 years now, he's broke. He's not doing well. And then you go to him and say, what's going on? Ah, you know, I was working in, in an oil company. Well, yeah, I know, I knew you were working. So what happened to you? Well, 10 years ago, you know, God told me to resign from my job and, and leave and trust him. So that's what I'm doing now. But you're not making any headway. You, you look poor. You look, yeah, you know, they say the way of the Lord is hard. Now that's what you have believed, but it's not true. If the oil job or whatever job you had was taking care of the bills, God will take care of it much more. This thinking, this thinking, this state of your mind. I told you some time ago, someone says, I would rather be poor than to steal. Wrong! How do you get justified by that word? You will not get justified by that kind of statement. You will get judged by that kind of statement. Because you said, I will not steal. So because I will not steal, I will choose to be poor. So you chose poverty. You are trying to form righteousness, but that is self-righteousness. That is not the righteousness that is in God. The righteousness that is in God will speak like this. Why should I steal when God provides for me? That thing, I'm being tempted to steal. My God can give it to me double. Yes! Now that's how you talk. And when you speak that way, and it is brought before you, I say, no, I will not steal. I'll trust my God to give it to me. Now you wake God up from his place. <laughs> and he says, my son has honored me, therefore I will honor him. But when you say, I would rather be poor than steal, who's receiving the honor? Because I'm a Christian, I, I, will, I, will, I will not steal. Instead of me to, be steal, to, steal, instead of me to steal, I, should, I will be poor. You have not honored God with those words. I would rather die than bow down to your God you have not honored God you will die that's not what Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego said go read it again you know I used to think that way until the Lord opened my understanding to it you know the story of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego the king said to them hey guys I hear you guys don't want to bow down by the, because of the instruction that I've given I'm going to give you one more chance. They are going to beat the, the drums and play the flutes and all that. When you hear that sound, you bow. If you don't bow, I'll throw you into that furnace and let me see the God that will deliver you from it. And these young men spoke to the king and said, Now, I want you to understand something. You see, sometimes we get these things wrong. And then we want to speak like we think they did. And we'll get ourselves into trouble. 
Some people think they were arrogant to the king. No, they were not arrogant to the king. The king already knew who they were. I hope you know that. Yes, because when, when Daniel was promoted, after he interpreted the king's dream, Daniel spoke to the king about his friends. And told him, look, I have these guys, they are too wise. And then the Bible said the king promoted Daniel's friends. And they were in charge of those. So they were bringing reports to the king and they were doing their job very well. And the king knew that the grace of God was upon their lives. He knew. So when he brought up that thing and they said to him, Oh king, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. That wasn't rude. They were not being rude. Now, of course, the translators are translating it in our language today. You see, For example, you know, when, when, when you read the story in the Bible and you see, for example, Jesus saying, Woman! You know, we want to read it in today's term. You say, woman, come here! As though you're speaking out of authority. But, but Jesus would say, woman, the same thing would say, oh, Mrs. Say, Hello, Mrs. If you know the person's name. That's what it meant. It's, it's a word for respect for woman. So it's not a word used to other people. Like, woman, come here! No. No. So when they said, oh, king, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. They were showing honor to the king. They were telling the king, say, king, this matter is not a problem at all. That's what they actually meant. See, this matter is not a problem. Look at what they said. They said, if it is that furnace, our God who we serve is able to deliver us from that burning furnace. And he will deliver us from your hands. Now, it was not... They were not saying you would, our God will pepper you. Our, no, that's not what they were saying. They were just telling the king the facts. You see, the, the challenge is you said, if we don't bow, we'll be thrown into that furnace. But we are here to tell you that that's not a problem. Because you see that furnace, our God is able to deliver us from that furnace. So the furnace cannot be a motivation to bow to this thing. No. And then they now said, and if not... They didn't, oh, come back, show me, I can't. They let the Lord, they, 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 the Lord said this to me, I'm like, I didn't see that. The Lord said to me, they didn't say, if God does not deliver us, know that we will still not bow. And the Lord said to me, if they had said that, they would have died in that furnace. And the Lord said this to me, he said, this is why a lot of my children die in the face of danger. Their words, what comes out of their mouth. You find someone is about to be killed for what he has believed. He, he believes in Jesus. And then these guys have come and they've taken him. And then they put a gun on his head. And he said, look, denounce Jesus or you die. And he says, I will never de denounce Jesus. I would rather die than denounce Jesus. And then they shoot and he dies. He said it. Not because they had power to kill him. What about saying, I will not denounce Jesus? Why? Because my Jesus is standing behind you now. Drop that gun now, he will slap you. And you will die. Because I'm not dying. There's no, no, not me dying here. If there's going to be any dying here, it's not me, it's you. So I'll advise you now. Because an angel is standing by your side right now. You know, Stephen, oh my leg brush. Stephen, ah, oh Lord Jesus. May knowledge come to the church. Stephen saw Jesus standing and he didn't take advantage of it. I come face to face with death and my eyes are open. I see Jesus standing. All of you that are trying to, you will, you will see trouble that day. <laughs> oh Lord Jesus. I, I, Lord, what do you want me to do? I know Jesus is not going to tell me it's okay, they should kill you. I know he will, he will never say that. I'm sure Jesus stood up to Stephen. He said, Stephen, what do you want? And Stephen said, I'm tired. I commend my spirit into your hands. What if Stephen had said, Lord, just like Elisha, come on now. Elisha said, Father, can you blind their eyes? And suddenly they all went blind. Not physically blind like they were. No, no, no. It was a step of faith. He said, blind their eyes. Then he came out and said, who are you looking for? Elijah, come, let me take you to him. 
That was the blindness. Their eyes were open. They were seeing the person they came to arrest, but they couldn't recognize him. You think God, that same God, have become disabled all of a sudden? No, we have not used this power. We confess wrong, and then we get it wrong. Don't confess debts when you see debts. Speak life, and life will ride over debts. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, we bless you. Mm. The power of God is available to save everyone who calls on his name. And he will not leave or turn his back away from those who trust in him. He is standing to save his own at every moment if they will only call on him for salvation. And he will deliver them and show himself strong on their behalf. So says the Spirit of Thank you, precious Lord Jesus. We receive this honor from you, Lord, which is your truth that you give. And we do it and bring glory to your name. In Jesus' name, amen. This weekend is going to be blessed for you. Praise God. I'll see you on Monday. Until then, have the best weekend ever.